Tangent colon. Tangent colon. Tangent colon. Tangent colon. Ahoy mateys, welcome to Tangent Calling, the Bristol Post podcast where we go off on weekly tangents based on the books we publish. We cover everything from music, uh, we're, doing, we're going to start doing album reviews as well, we also cover street art, uh, ghosts and witches, uh, foraging for mildly psychedelic tea eventually, <laughs> and today we're talking about pirates. So my name is Sol. Uh, today I'll be joined by Richard and historian Mark Steeds. Mark Steeds is the co-author of Pirates and Privateers out of Bristol, which is now available on the Tangent Books website. And he's going to be listing today his top five most ruthless, bloodthirsty, uh, interesting pirates to ever sail the seven seas. So as always, uh, there's a discount code for this week. The discount code for this week is going to be pirates. Um, so put that in at the Tangent Books website to get a 10% discount on The Naked Guide to Bristol, which is our best-selling book, as well as Pirates and Privateers out of Bristol, Mark's book on pirates. Mark, why did people become pirates? Ah, well, that's a very good question. It's, it goes, goes back to Roman times, um, even the Phoenicians... Where, where people outside the state, if you like, um, went on their own account. They, they, they didn't like having a king or they didn't like any form of government or they were down on their luck. All manner of, all manner of reasons, really. Um, they just took, took their, their own lives into their own hands to the nth degree, using other people's wealth and possessions <laughs> to get them through. Presumably they didn't have any money either. Presumably they, were, they weren't, uh, you know, they, they, they were desperate. Yeah, they were generally desperate desperation. down on their luck. Yeah. yeah. Certainly in the Caribbean, in the, the sort of golden age of piracy that we're going to talk about later. So um, all the way back to the Phoenicians then. I didn't realise that it went back that far. And it, it, I think uh, you said earlier that Julius Caesar was actually captured by pirates. Yes, yes, he was, and and they made the mistake of of ransom, ransom and Esther. They, they paid an Esther. <laughs> yeah, they made the mistake of trying to get a ransom for him, and um, and this they achieved, but uh, they rued the day because because he then went out and pursued them and killed every last one of them. Yeah, they were like that Roman emperors, weren't yeah, they? Roman, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How important do you think Bristol was to the pirate, not industry, but, you know... The vibe. The, yeah, the, the pirate, pirate vibes. vibes. Yeah. Right. Well, the thi- I think you, you've just got to look at the history of the city, really. It, it, it certainly was a huge maritime concern for all manner of things, smuggling, slaving, pirating... All the all these sort of things were going on, and it just wasn't the people at the bottom of the pile that were concerned with it. It was those at the top of the pile as well. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the Smythe family, um, but they've they if you look into their history, they they had the the great place at Long Ashton, um, Ashton Court, and you go back to their early history, and and they were involved in smuggling, pretty big into smuggling actually. Uh, avoiding the government's revenue and, and also a little bit of the old slavery on the side as well. Yeah, I was, I was looking. I was looking at one of the Radical History Group pamphlets, and um, I only realised that, of course, smuggling only really came about once um, taxes were levelled. That that's, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. I, I hadn't made that connection. It's obvious, yeah, isn't it? That yeah. there was no need to smuggle stuff until the uh, until customs and excise or the equivalent. Started taxing people for uh, importing goods, and so, yeah. and and it was it was people avoided paying that tax by smuggling in in huge numbers, didn't they? I mean, they they a, did, yeah. yeah. But everything's got ramifications. We were saying earlier about prohibition in the states and the rise of gangsters, because you know all of a sudden alcohol is is prohibited, and 
they need to get it and the gangsters filled that void made themselves extremely wealthy off the back of it and then when prohibition was re repealed they then looked at another market to get into which was narcotics which also coincidentally about that time had also been banned so it's you know all these things if they're if they're not around someone will come in and supply it and, and pirates were just like that you know yeah so they didn't pay their taxes either did they they didn't no. they were like amazon weren't they Mark? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the amazon of their day <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Blackbeard had to pay his wife thirty-five billion dollars in alimony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was, no, it's a black. It was, pirates weren't on paye as far as we know, were they? No, no. no. Imagine the working conditions weren't. The health and safety wasn't great either. So sorry, I interrupted. You had another pertinent question. You were about to fire across at our guest. Um, well, it brought me to my next question, which was, what were pirates doing most of the time? What, what did pirates actually really do? <laughs> What did they do? They they um they tried to make the most of things actually. I mean the 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 way they they ended up was it was a bit of a travesty usually. Um, there were some that had, had been shipped off to the the Caribbean because they'd fought on the side of Monmouth, for instance. There was, there's others who'd been oiked away because they in, in so called indentured servitude, um, bec because they didn't have a job in in Britain. All manner of things dictated why why they were sort of bereft of anything to do or 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 a course of action in their lives, a legitimate course of action in their lives, if you like. But they made the most of it. They they um, they notoriously drank. They they enjoyed rum, which was the tipple of the Caribbean. Um, they enjoyed bands as well. Every pirate ship had a had a band, and the musicians. Um, they weren't asked to get involved in the raids. They just had to make a bit of a noise when they went into action, you know, playing their old music. And they they were on call twenty four seven whenever um, one of the more uh, um, voc voc vocal vocal pirates wanted something going. They um, they asked the band to chime in. Yeah. So would they would they typically spend their lives at sea, or would they would they uh, would they live on land and then go to sea when they were going to plunder and pillage or, or, or were they were they sort of like seafair were they were they at sea for most of the time I th there was a mixture of it all yeah. really it, it depended who was after them you know or it depended who they were after yeah you know because it, and, and their activities weren't just restricted to the Caribbean for instance um, they, they they made a nuisance of themselves in the Newfoundland fisheries they made a hell of a nuisance of themselves in West Africa, and they even held up the slave trade at one time. So, what's and what's the difference between a pirate and a privateer, Mark? Because in one of your books, um, "Pirates and Privateers Out of Bristol," uh, which you did with Fiducia, you and Ken did that, didn't you? Uh, with yeah, Fiducia the Press. Ken. Yeah, yeah, it's Ken Griffiths, yeah. some years ago. Um, it's a great book. We we got it on the Tangent website. Uh, and I, 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 I really like that book. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really good history of uh, Bristol's piratical past. But a ripping yarn. It, well, it is. It's, it's really well researched, and it's it's got some great characters in there. And uh, um, but pirates and privateers out of Bristol is the title of the book. So what's the difference between a pirate and a privateer? A pirate basically was on on his own account, he looked after himself, not beholden to anybody apart from his pals, perhaps. Whereas a privateer was a state-sponsored pirate, um, they have what they call a letter of mark. Um, for when, when, for instance, Britain was at war with somebody and they didn't have enough of their own navy, they engaged private people to act on the state's behalf. But it wasn't confined to Britain. You had um, French privateers, Dutch, Spanish, even, and also American later on when when America after the American Revolution. Right, so you're going to pick us uh, your top five pirates, Mark. Yeah, top five. <clears throat> top five. That's going to be top six. Top six pirates. Top six <laughs> yeah. pirates. Yeah. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to we're going to we're going to start at the, the number six and then work our way up to the to the top, uh, to top of the chart. The, the, the top the, of the pops. Top of the pops. Absolutely. And then we'll have a bit of chat in between about things like flags and parrots and things like that, important things, and. Um, Jolly Rogers. Yeah, we want to talk about that in a bit. But first of all, 
Is it going to be five or six? Is it going to be a top five or well, a top... Six, six. I think you should mention Gary Mabbott. He's <laughs> one of the best pirates of them all. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about sea pirates, not Bristol Rovers pirates. Although I'm perfectly happy <laughs> to talk about Gary Mabbott, the Bristol Rovers, one of the many Bristol Rovers greats. And, I, <laughs> and he was... He almost... He almost got an England cap while he was at Rovers, which would be very, very unusual. Yeah, that would have been remarkable. Yeah. It would, yeah, yeah. But, but he, he was a great talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he hasn't been well recently, but I think he's... Uh, the, uh, well, throughout his, his playing career... He, diabetic, he, wasn't he? he? Yeah. Diabetic. He, he was a great role model, himself. actually. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. Role, yeah. <laughs> Unlike your your first choice of, of pirate, seafaring pirate, was, was, was he a... I presume they're all he's. There aren't any female pirates, are there? Well, there are, but not in my top five. Oh well, well, I'm not, not sure. Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't know. About I don't know list. about that, Mark. I mean, we, we like to celebrate diversity on these podcasts, you know. <laughs> so maybe that's that's a sort. Maybe we'll have a. Uh, a, a yeah, we'll, a we'll have a bit we'll have on we'll have, Yeah, well, reading Mary Bonny a bit later yeah, on. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. yeah. We'll gladly identify this failing. <laughs> um, but Henry Morgan's a chap I'd like to start off with. Henry Morgan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he went off. It's a rum is, named after is him. Is he the guy on oh, the yeah, cider? The what? The cider. Oh, no, it's <laughs> rum. Cider. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, pirates don't drink cider. <laughs> you youngsters. <laughs> yeah, Morgan's Morgan Morgan oh, Rum. Morgan captain. Rum, that's Captain. Yeah. So he was yeah. Captain Morgan, was he? Oh, that's Captain Morgan. This is the original Captain Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Bloody no right. way. Still here, though. No way. That's a good one to start. I didn't yeah. realize Captain Morgan was a real yeah. pirate. Well, no. he, he went out at Bristol. He, he, his um, his two uncles were on different sides in the English Revolution, the English Civil War. Um, and he, he, when he was at school, he, he sort of knew he was ordained better with the pike than he was with a book, he, he, is, uh, he is alleged to have said. But um, he, he went out of Bristol, and if you go in Bristol Records office, there is a fantastic little archive to him, a, a signed Henry Morgan bit of script from where he went out as an indentured servant. And he went to Barbados, and he worked for a Bristol cutler there. And it was only when Cromwell wanted uh, to take Hispaniola in his western design one of the most prolific and wealthiest of the Caribbean islands it was only when when that expedition went off that he 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 ran away from being a cutler and joined this was Admiral William Penn's expedition uh, he joined that cruise and that sort of started his his fighting life if you like good grief so um so, would he have been a young lad when he left Bristol then, an indentured servant? He, he was in his teens, yeah. In his teens. And so, yeah. it's, it's, it's difficult to imagine, isn't it? You're a, a teenager from from presumably humble background. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, and you get sent across to the end of the, literally to the end of the of the earth, really. That's you know, right, yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah. On, a, on a boat which uh, presumably is full of, sort of, well, there's no guarantee of illness and plague and danger and well, they say it must they, be terrifying they, they, well, it must say, be absolutely terrifying was, as a, yeah. a kid there was 200,000 British and Irish indentured servants sent off 200,000 in the 17th century and 40% of them died well in the, actually on the journey well, not necessarily on the journey alone but w- before their their um, um, apprenticeship was up if you like the, the apprenticeship term varied between four and ten years. That's that's uh, you know you, you you could say that's virtually genocide, couldn't you? You you could do. You know yeah, to send yeah. that 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 as a percentage of the population at the time, yeah, which is obviously a lot was, smaller. It was, that's, it was that's severe. Yeah, that was severe. only about forty percent came home. The remaining twenty percent stayed in the Caribbean, um, either turning pirate or getting a job for the government or working on plantations. So that's good context that isn't it you know to put yourself in the in the uh uh in in the shoes of Henry Morgan you know he must have been terrified being sent off to to see as an indentured servant as a slave virtually. Yeah yeah. You know to, and sent to the, to Barbados. Barbados to begin with. Not knowing what what life held for him presumably you know obviously separated from his family his friends and uh yeah. um so so he he what he he then Ran then away joined, or escaped? He, well, he, he joined Penn's expedition um, to Jamaica, as it turned out. And, and Jamaica was the prize that Admiral Penn and, and Venables, who was the land commander, sent back to Cromwell. They they, they tried to, to secure Hispaniola, which is one of the biggest islands after Cuba in the Caribbean. They failed 
and they got Jamaica as a sort of a booby prize, in, if you like, in the in the 1650s. So he was actually, but he was he was fighting at sea, was he then? Did he they, was fighting at sea and on land as yeah. well. Yeah. But as, as a pirate at that stage, or was he well, actually? No, this was this was a, a legitimate, yeah. so called. So when 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 did, when did he um, when did he um, become a pirate? As such? Well, well, he. What, what when they basically landed in Jamaica? Yeah. He stayed in Jamaica. He got in with the wrong crowd, if you like, and um, he then became a bit of a nuisance to the Spanish. I and, see. And um, the, there's a, a very famous episode in his life when when he led about two thousand fellow pirates of all nationalities across the isthmus of Panama from the Caribbean Sea across to the Pacific. And attack Panama itself. Really, a massive, massive, <laughs> massive assault on Panama. Um, and unfortunately, by the time they got there, um, one of the um, Spanish priests had had the foresight to whitewash their massive gold altar that was in the cathedral, and the lads missed it. When they <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a neglect from the neglectful pirates. No, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so lots what, of what, adventures. So yeah, so but lots of adventures. That is, is that is that why he's there at number five? Because of his uh, his, his, his adventures, or is there anything? Or is it number him? six? No, no, Gary Mabbott. All oh, right, the football, the, the football. football yeah, yeah, was yeah, so always, should we talk about Gary Mabbott it's, again? Uh, <laughs> I like that, but, it's <laughs> sad that his legacy has kind of just become. You know, I mean, last year for New Year's Eve, I think I I was meant to go to a party. I ended up drinking a whole bottle of Captain Morgan's rum <laughs> to myself. Well, well, enough, I never got to that party. <laughs> their their logo <laughs> is um, is this very handsome buccaneer type, and it looked nothing like um, Morgan in real life. He was sly eyed, as he had a bit of a cast in his eye. He was pot bellied. He was uh, he was almost yellow in colour because he was jaundiced, <laughs> and uh, to to get treatment off of uh, there were, there weren't very many doctors around at the time, but he he used to have a voodoo voodoo treatment from one of the local enslaved to <laughs> to look after himself. But he was he was a vicious man. He was he was uh, when he attacked the Spanish, he'd he'd use um, priests or nuns as human shields when they went wow. to attack, Ooh. and uh, he didn't mind who he tortured in order to get information in order to get even more loot and he's only at number five <laughs> yeah he's at number four mark i wouldn't have minded him at number one to be honest but <laughs> well it was your choice yeah no one made you no one no, made no, you no, no, well, I, I feel i was put under a bit of pressure here <laughs> so who's at, who's at number well, four we'll mark? have calico jack we mentioned that's we, a good name isn't yeah, it yeah calico, calico jack yeah yeah i like that yeah um, one, slightly <laughs> It sounds like he was in touch with his feminine side, Calico Jack. <laughs> well, funny enough, he, 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 was, he was one Calico. of the ones who went around with Mary Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, the two two lady pirates. Lady pirates. You story. left them out, though, didn't you? Well, they're not in the top five. But, no, I think, <laughs> but if we had a top we're, ten, we're, they would have been in the top to, ten. We're going to have to review. We'll carry on. Yeah, Calico you Jack. limited me to five. <laughs> Or Calico, six. Calico Jack. So anyway, well, Calico Jack. Yeah, according to to <laughs> my was he from so- Bristol. Funnily enough, he was according to my sort of Bible, which is which is the general history of ye pirates, which was published in the seventeen twenties. Who wrote that? That sounds that Cap- sounds reliable. A, a chap called Captain Johnson, but some people say it was an alias of Daniel Defoe. No, is that right? Yeah, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, and it's hugely factual. And it's about one of the only contemporaneous notes you'll get on any of the, of so the is pirates this, so this from presume, the pirate golden age. But the, the, this isn't an original copy, presumably. It's, uh, it's, 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 does the original exist of this uh, of this tome? They've got a second edition in the, in the records office, and they might even have the no, sorry, in the central library, might even have a first edition in there. Really, but but Dawn only let me have the second edition. <laughs> So you go, you go into the central library and and, uh, and leaf through it. You, you, you can, you, you can you leaf through it, and action. it's a fascinating book. Yeah, and other, other proper historians have looked. What did you say then? <laughs> so you go to the central library. <laughs> yes, sometimes. Yeah, I don't look. Like I didn't I know do, this. I, 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 is this in the Bristol room at the central library? Um, yeah, but you can get it in the in the reference in the reference which is library, just yeah. outside the Bristol yeah. room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Bristol room is is I it's, know, it's it, such a supreme oh, asset for Bristol. It's great, it's, yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Is it open, it's not. Open to the, well, obviously, it's not at the moment. But is it open to the public generally? The Bristol room. Um, if by appointment. By appointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Proper, proper scholars can go in there. Yeah, well, it's great if you if you if you if you, if you ever get the chance to visit the Bristol Room. 
Oh, well, do it, do it. it. They've, they've a... got a book in there from um, from when the library was in King Street, um, and all the great Romantic poets have signed their names in this this book for withdrawals they made from the library in in King Street. Oh, never knew. If, wow. you, if you ever want to research anything, it, but they it's weren't phenomenal. pirates, were they? They were namby pamby romantics. Well, <laughs> you, like you, you say Jack. that. You say that. <laughs> So why is he? Why so? So he was from Bristol. Where was he? From Kingswood. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. Otwells. Was he? Was he really? No, no, no. The only the only chap they say who came from, uh, they give Bristol as a as a de- uh, as a home, um, is is Blackbeard, and they oh, say yeah, yeah, they yeah, say he came from Redcliffe. Yeah, but, we're getting it. But, but we're, yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're, we're yeah, we we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're just wetted your appetite. I'm just giving you some background. Anyway, Calico Jack, he refused. He refused. Pirate's pardon that, that Woods Rogers had gone out in 1718 to get. Well, King George I had come to the throne and they decided that there was no way they could control all these pirates. So what they did, they'd sort of pardon them. And if they took the pardon and said they wouldn't they wouldn't go pirating again, they they were sort of let off and were in able to were able to keep all their ill-gotten gains. And quite a few people um, took that Hornigold, who was one of um um, Blackbeard's shipmates he took it for instance which is funny because Blackbeard wouldn't have anything to do with it but one who didn't take it was Calico Jack and from 1718 to the 70, early 1720s he went around a pirating and making a nuisance of himself and he was in league with Mary Reed and Anne Bonny the two famous lady pirates who dressed as seamen So why have you rated Calico Jack higher than Captain, Captain Morgan. Morgan's Henry Morgan. Well, <laughs> was he? Well, I don't know really. <laughs> I do. So you, can, you can change the order. I didn't think the order was that, that important, really. Oh, but, <laughs> but but it's, there's a funny story attached with Calico Jack. God, believe me. There's a funny story attached with Calico Jack, whereby um, he was both him and the two girls were arrested and were, were sentenced to be hung. And um, and Mary Reed was was not very nice to him, and so you deserve to die, you dog, for for being so daft as getting caught. But uh, the two girls, funnily enough, avoided getting hung because all of a sudden, miraculously, they were with child. But Mary's Mary's story is is an interesting one. She was a uh, she was from a land owning Irish family, and she was very hot tempered, and she stabbed one of her servants, uh, one of her lady servants. Uh, girl servants sorry and uh, in order to the, the the disgrace on the family in order to get away from that they went over to America and, and settled in America she still didn't like that and she still was a bit of a wild child and she turned to pirating and Anne Bonny's story she's she's another really interesting one she she was actually um, a soldier's wife in the, in in the, the Marlborough campaign throughout um, throughout Central Europe and her husband actually died fighting for Marlborough, and she she ended up being vanquished. Nothing to do, sort of, a, sort of thing. And she decided to go to sea, so she dressed as a man and went to sea. Teamed up with uh, with Mary Reed. So do do we know do we know if many women were pirates? I mean, or, or you say they 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 dressed as a man, but presumably they the other people on the on the ship knew that they were women. Or well, they, they, were... they knew in the end, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. But, 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 but if you've got to remember that. <clears throat> they were they were featured in this book by Captain Johnson, and he needed to sell copies, so he he, he wanted to titillate it with with ah, certain right. stories and one thing and another. So the portraits of the girls in there, they're sort of scantily clad in in men's outfits, you know, that sort of thing. And it's uh, <laughs> nothing, always to sell a good book, you know. <laughs> So well, he's, he's interesting, but th- th- I'm just mentioning not really top, 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 but I'm just mentioning people that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that have, have made a, an imp- impression on me. So Calico Jack at number four. Yeah. Who's at number three, Mark? Number three. Um, we could go with, um, there is me list then. There's me list. And we'll go at Henry Avery. There you are. Oh, Henry, Henry, Henry Avery. Avery. Henry Avery. Is that Avery as in the wine company? Exactly. Or it... In fact, they, they say they are descended from Henry Avery, the pirate. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, the others I've heard of, but I've not heard of Henry Avery. So what distinguishes Henry Avery? Where, where was, let's start at the beginning. Where, where, do, you know where he, do we know where he was from? Bridgewater. 
Was he really? Yeah. No wonder. No wonder, no, no, no wonder he sailed to the other side of the world. But, <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of a very rude joke I used to know. Anyway, about Bridgewater. Um, so, um, and, the, and the cellophane factory. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, the cellophane factory. Yeah. I went through Bridgewater not so long ago. It's very different now. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't smell. Doesn't smell. No. And. and um, so he's from Bridgewater. Presumably, he set sail from like the others set sail from Bristol. You know, so he, oh yeah, yeah, undoubtedly, yeah. yeah. And, and it, his his story he's interesting because um, we're we're on about the government and and how they were operating sort of with the Royal African Company that that was that was given by Charles the Second um, to a, a gang of his mates to have sole monopoly on on the slave trade mm. and the burgeoning East India Company was sort of set up in this time as well and that was to exploit India and um, what Avery did he he um, he he stole a ship him and his mates were, were were waiting to go on a privateering venture funnily enough off the Spanish coast nothing was happening for months and months on end and in the end they decided to steal steal the ship Avery was in charge and Unusually, instead of going across the Atlantic, they went around the tip of Africa and then up, and up through the Indian Ocean to the Red Sea. And um, there they attacked the great Mog- Mogul's ship. And um, they stole tons and tons of rubies and diamonds and all these fine, fine um, treasures mm. from, from, from the, the East, if you like. And this got, got him and others in terrible trouble got the East India Company in trouble because the French were able to say they're just a bunch of pirates and all the rest of it. So then they were pursued uh, quite quite closely by um, by all, all manner of people, including Captain Kidd. Actually, Captain Kidd went after them initially. Before so, was, he he, was, he, was he a pirate hunter, Captain Kidd? He was initially, yeah. 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 And then they accused him of turning pirate. And then, and then when the Whigs lost control of... of um, England to the Tories, uh, he lost his political backers, and he ended up being strung up at execution dock. But that was the fate that awaited Henry Avery as well, and he had terrible trouble fencing his his ill-gotten gains. Um, it was it was difficult to 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 get rid of rubies and diamonds and things without sort of attracting suspicion. And allegedly, he came back to Britain, got in with some Bristol merchants, and they they robbed him on the land. And took all his, and he ended up destitute back in Bridgewater in the end. Oh no! <laughs> so, <clears throat> a terrible fate. Be- before so, so he, before so he, turning to the wine trade. <laughs> <laughs> so he was he wasn't executed then. He he was uh, no no he managed to, yeah, to live yeah yeah, yeah. but he, he was very close and what a life I mean on yeah. the run from all these people yeah. they're all setting setting after you and kids galley um a spe- it was a special type of boat it was it was like one of them old Greek vessels you know the, the three tier ones with the with the oars and everything yeah so a galley had had oars and everything for when you were becalmed right before we go to number two there's a couple of questions that i wanted to ask you um first of all the jolly roger oh yeah the pirate flag what's what's that all about the skull and crossbones why mm. why where, where, do you know the origins of that or why or, or was it was it actually flown when they did they fly it when they went into battle or was it well, it, all it's, time, it's, all, it's all back to the, <clears throat> the days of the Caribbean in the 17th and 18th century when when the French if they were attacking you um, they would they would hoist a red flag to say they would you know if you haven't if you're not going to surrender we're going to kill every last one of you and that that red flag was the, called the Jolly Rouge and of course that got corrupted into the Jolly Roger and then the pirates adop- adopted it but changed it. They put their own motifs on there, most notably the old skull and crossbones. You know, in that pirates book, they've all, they've all their individual flags are there. Um, Calico Jack had his own. His his was with two two sabers. Um, Blackbeard had one. It was a skeleton with um with a, a spear, um going down onto a red heart. Oh, so the Jolly Roger was not a generic one. Was that a, was was a Jolly Roger a generic pirate flag then or, or, or did they have their own well it, ver- well, it was ish but yeah. they had their own version Variations. of it as well I never knew that I mean, I mean the most the most um, successful pirate of them all was a, 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 another Welsh pirate called Black Bart Roberts 
and his he had a couple of he had a couple of Jolly Rogers. One one was with um, with a skeleton standing above um, um, uh, two skulls, and one was a Barbadian head, and the other was a Mauritian head. And he swore blind he was going to get the governors of those two islands and kill them. Um, and unfortunately for the Mauritian um, governor, he, he did get caught by Black Bart Roberts. <laughs> but it was Black Bart Roberts actually ultimately who held up the slave trade. Um, in the 1720s and made a right nuisance of himself all nations were held up because of his activities so but, the uh, other, I digress you know. the, other, the other question was why do pirates have parrots on their shoulder mm. well they just pirates and it wasn't only parrots it was monkeys all, all sorts of things if you if you imagine you know in this country you'll have a cat or a dog or whatever um, a not on your shoulder though <laughs> some do yeah <laughs> No, oh, it's a serious point. Why, 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 I've got this dog sat on my shoulder now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, and and all, well, where they were, they for entertainment. You know, we were on about entertainment. What did pirates do all day? Sort of thing. They played with a parrot, <laughs> but or the monkey or whatever. I think you know they, they were in exotic lands, and those those animals were available. Yeah. And they just assumed them as pets. Plus, the additional advantage if they did come back to Britain. They could sell them, you know. They were exotic animals. You know, you get a monkey and get a monkey in Bristol. You were made. You'd go around with your <laughs> organ grinder and what have you. <laughs> Make money hand over fist. So, number two. Number two. Two. We're number two. Into the big leagues now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the big leagues. The fig leaves. Was it? Was it? Was it a close? Don't tell us who is number one. But was it a close run thing between one and two? I think I I can guess who's going to be number two. I think, he, I think I can one. guess, but anyway, anyway, number two, Israel Hands. Is that who oh, you Israel, heard Israel no, Hands? Did no, not see no. that coming. No, no. The no, reason the reason coming. is yeah. that he doesn't exist. Oh yes, he does. Oh, he's no, he's not. He's a fictional character. He's in, <laughs> he's in, he's in treasure. Well, we're approaching he's the in, pantomime season. <laughs> <laughs> he's in. Uh, he's in. He's, a, he's a, one of the pirates in Treasure Island. But at which point I should mention the other book, which is the. Uh, the Bristol Treasure Island Trail, which I think you wrote, Mark. I had, you wrote that as well. Uh, helped by my fellow trustees. Yeah, um, so that, Jerry, that's, Jerry that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that, uh, that celebrates um, Bristol's connection with Treasure Island, which was the only part of which was written uh, or it was based in Bristol uh, when the Hispaniola set sail on its adventure. Um, and there is a Treasure Island Trail which, uh, which goes round the floating harbour, which... Uh, um, is uh, there's an app available if you go to the Long John Silver Trust website you'll be able to find all the links there and we'll give it a plug at the end of this as well um, but Israel getting back to and Israel Hands I can confirm oh, that Israel Hands was a real person well, how do you know that? the you internet just googled him just yeah. googled it. <laughs> <laughs> it says oh, his, his name me? serves as the base well yeah. <laughs> uh, his name on, serves as the basis for the uh for the Robert Louis Stevenson novel, but he was a real person. Yeah, he was Jim's nemesis in the story of Treasure Island. So this is interesting, isn't it? That Robert Louis Stevenson actually took a real life pirate and put him in Treasure Island. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. is. I mean, it's it, it, and he was a Bristol fellow as well. Oh, he was actually from Bristol. He was so, from yeah. from Bristol as well. Yeah, he was. Uh, do he do was we know where? Cell... Do we know whereabouts in Bristol? Is it Kingswood? <laughs> it's Kingswood again. <laughs> oh, Hotwells. <laughs> Oh no, Redcliffe! That was Blackbeard. No, we don't know, <laughs> but but he's a really interesting character. He's named in um, Captain Johnson's book, um, famously because on the eve of when when Blackbeard had his fi final confrontation with Lieutenant Maynard of the Royal Navy, um, he was playing cards with with Blackbeard, and this this was the episode whereby. Blackbeard just for a bit of fun blew his kneecap off. What his own kneecap? <laughs> no, his real hands kneecap. Oh, yeah, that's but, not nice. But that's not nice. Why, why did he do that? Yeah, well, he... ultimately, it saved Israel's life because he uh, he wasn't in the final confrontation, and and the survivors mm. of that final confrontation all got strung up. So so good old Blackbeard saved Israel's life. <laughs> so if he wasn't killed in the confrontation, why wasn't he strung up? Because because he couldn't take part, so he was. Oh, in, I see. In, and I see. by the by the time they they got round to uh, to to sort of dealing with him, um, that 
he he was in, he was able to take the pirates' pardon. I oh, see. So, but that didn't stop him getting involved again, because a little bit later on, um, his the, the slave ship he was on uh, was taken by Black Bart Roberts in one of his his um, big raids, and he ended up turning pirate again and serving with Black Bart Roberts Ooh. until Black Bart Roberts' demise. Yeah, in the seventeen twenties. So he, he quite a character. Do you know what happened to him? Did he come back to Kingswood? <laughs> <laughs> he, um, <clears throat> Captain Ogle of the Royal Navy was sent to deal with Black Bart Roberts because he was such a nuisance. And uh, two ships, the, the Weymouth and the Swallow, I think it was. And the real life um, Robinson Crusoe, Alexander Selkirk, ended up on the Swallow and finished his days there because of disease. Anyway, the Weymouth, or was it the Weymouth... Any anyway, one of them vessels um, was used as a decoy to bring Black Bart's Robert Black Bart Robert's ship out from its West African harbour, um, and they had a big scrap at sea. Uh, Israel ended up getting uh, losing his left arm. Um, he got apprehended by the navy, taken to Cape Corso Castle, and was one of the the pirates who was put to death there. Even though he's harmless, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that he was harmless. I mean, if you read just Treasure said he Island, left arm. <laughs> yeah. If you read Treasure Island, you know he's yeah, Jim's yeah. nemesis, and and uh, they have a fight to the death in that as well. You know, well, what a brilliant writer Stevenson is, sort of weaving all these stories together. Yeah, yeah. So before we, I, 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 before, I, yeah, before we get to number before one, before we get to number one. So um, yeah, so you got a question, Sol. Yeah, I do. We were talking before the podcast, and you were going to tell me what a buccaneer is, and I said, let's save it for the podcast, so now <laughs> I'm going to ask you, what is a buccaneer? A buccaneer. Um, it derives from the name Bukan, which is someone who, who barbecues meat, and um, actually, in the Caribbean, that was what the, the locals did, they, 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 and the Spanish picked up on that, and... Um, and put it into their vocabulary a boucan, someone who barbecues meat and then because pirates had a tendency to, to cook their own, prepare their own meals in the same way, they became boucaneers and buccaneers mm. sort of went into modern parlance so that is basically derived from the 17th century again funnily enough, one of the nicknames of Long John Silver in Stevenson's class, classic is barbecue he was of course the sea cook in Bristol in, in one thing and another is that right? Yeah. I, I can't. I, is, is that actually in the book? Or in Treasure Island? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I don't remember that bit. Yeah. Yeah, I must. I must. I'll re. I'll reread <laughs> it. Reread it. More, more attention. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, again, before we get to number one, <laughs> before we get to number one, uh, pirates. I think uh, pe- most people, I include myself in this, think of a pirate as having a a ship with a Jolly Roger and a parrot on their shoulder and possibly a leg missing. And um, or an eye, or an eye, yeah. Of course, I, yeah, the eye patch is another sort of classic uh, oh, yeah. pirate trait, yeah. isn't it? Well, the pirates um, actually they looked at it, they, they were one of the first democracies, um, at sea, and and it, and they used to get compensation if they lost a limb or something in conflict, they would get an extra bit of money to to compensate for them. For is that, that right? Yeah, and they, they so used there to have good, votes and everything. So there, there is there is a good side to the slaughter and thieving <laughs> and pillaging and all yes, that. Yes, the, the, the so birth of democracy. <laughs> it's you thought it was Greece. <laughs> because I kind of think of pirates more as Johnny Depp. Pirates or romantic Caribbean, characters. Like kind of romantic heroes. Well, these were violent times. And that's what I was going to come on to, actually, because... <laughs> Uh, he's a also, wife beater <laughs> but also also I think most people would think of a pirate as being, as being one crew on a particular ship but some of these pirates were actually fleets weren't they they were quite um, oh yeah yeah. yeah. So, well, so, Black Bart had a fleet of ships so what, when, yeah, he, when we yeah. say a fleet I mean how, do we know how many how many ships we're talking about two <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, some some of them were quite large fleets, weren't they? Of, uh, uh, not really. Were they not? No, 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 two or three vessels. Yeah. They, oh, is that? Yeah, they, they weren't. So, they weren't so how come how come that the navy could have so much difficulty with all their resources? You know, in tracking down and well, and, initially they had the wrong types of ships to pursue them. You know, they were in sloops or, or schooners, and very fast ships. 
and the the and the navies of the day were were generally a lot bigger and less less manoeuvrable if you like and also they didn't have the manpower they didn't have the giant fleets that uh, they 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 would latterly in the 18th and 19th centuries and why would the navy be or the, or the, uh, acting on the on the behalf of the king why would the why was the navy so keen to stop the pirating is it is is was it because of the the actual um disruption or was it again for more economic reasons was it because of the tax in the, you know that there was the the, the 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 king's coffers presumably weren't getting any uh gathering any tax from the goods coming into the country so was was it was it was it that sort of financial imperative it, exactly right yeah it was all those things actually i mean i mean I mean, someone we're going to mention in a minute actually held up the tobacco fleet from Virginia back to Britain until they paid him tribute, as they called it. Yeah, so it is, so it is very similar to Amazon in that sense. Isn't it? <laughs> well, no, seriously, you know, Amazon don't pay their taxes, so they, you know they are the modern day pirate, really, aren't they? Yeah, the pirate, I suppose the digital so, yeah. pirates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so. I didn't know you were so uh, anti-Amazon. <laughs> well, aren't you? Everyone, really? Well, obviously everyone isn't. Cause well, he's invested two billion pounds of his seventy billion, sorry, two billion dollars of his seventy billion dollar enterprise in green energy, hasn't he? He's got all those wind turbines yeah, and everything. Taxes, so he's not all bad, is he? Well, mm. my wife said that. <laughs> it's anyway, so only two billion out of seventy. <laughs> Anyway, before, before we get to the one, so you got any more At least questions? he did it, and these governments didn't do it, didn't he? <laughs> I think let's let's go to number one. Number one. Yeah, oh, I've okay. had enough let's of you. Just check want to it go out. Straight to number one. <laughs> number one. Who's number one? <laughs> Blackbeard, of course. Yeah. He's a Bristol boy, isn't he? He lives at Redcliffe. Yeah, according right. to Johnson again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Richard came out with some pretty outlandish claims in uh, in our ghost episode about Blackbeard. He said that. He had his head chopped off, and then he swam round a boat nine times headless. I did not say that. You, you did? <laughs> it's recorded. I said seven times. Oh. <laughs> no, nah, he's, he's wrong. It was only three. <laughs> so what's the story, Mark? Well, let's, let's, we do, we, let's, we'll get to the end. So what, what, do we know? What's it, what was his real name? What do we know about him? Yeah. Well, he's got three, three names he could have been. Um, Thatch... Teach or Drummond, and his first name Edward. So it's either Edward Ed. Teach, Edward Thatch, or Edward Drummond. I can see the Thatch and the Teach maybe being mutations. Yeah. But Drummond, well, that's that's quite different, isn't it? Is there any? Yeah. Do we know why? Do no. I, no. <laughs> we don't. We know he's from. Um, from we know he's from Redcliffe. Yeah. But we, do we know where specifically in Redcliffe? Guinea Street. Do we? I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I made it no. up. <laughs> and the house at time yeah, yeah, yeah. The house through time yeah house through time yeah, even yeah, though yeah. that was yeah. that was built in the same year that he died was it yeah, yeah. funnily enough so anyway back, so let's get back on uh, on topic here so Mark um, so we know he's from Redcliffe we don't know where are there any clues at all as to where he might have lived in Redcliffe no no, no not at all, all. No. Okay. No, no. and some um, say he was um, he was born on a plantation in Jamaica Really, but yeah. we, we, we'll, we'll stick with Redcliffe because it suits yeah, our yeah, purposes well, best. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like and, Redcliffe. <laughs> and can we, can we, let's, let's just think what Redcliffe would have been like when um, when Edward Teach Thatch or Drummond was born. So Good what point. kind of year was this? This would have been the 1680s, something like that, 1690s. So what was that like? Was that Tudor well, the, well, times? No, no, that's Stuart time, Stuart era. Right. And you just had the English Revolution. Bristol played a big part in that. Um, the castle had just been demolished on the on the command of Cromwell. So this was before the Restoration, was it? Was uh... no, the Restoration was sixteen sixty. So just after the just Restoration, after the restoration yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. You'd have you'd have had all the turmoil because of the Monmouth Rebellion, sixteen eighty five, um, when when Bristol was was sort of a strategic prize for Monmouth and his in his band of rebels and um, and uh, the the city, you know, various things happened in the city as a result of that but luckily they didn't they didn't go into the terrible loss of life they had only 20 years earlier so so we're, we're in a sort of post-revolutionary society after the english revolution the monarchy's been restored but there are still um 
political forces such as yeah. Monmouth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you had bloody Je- Judge Jeffries had come to, Judge, to, yeah. to Bristol. Four people, even though they weren't really involved in the Monmouth Rebellion, got strung up on Redcliffe Hill. So these were violent times still, weren't they? They're very much and, so, yeah. What, what would the, I mean, obviously, Redcliffe absolutely on the on the uh, on the docks so you know what would what would the uh, the dock side have been like then can we sort of just take a picture of the of the um, the neighborhood from which young edward would have grown up it would have been uh, yeah, it would have been rough and ready it would have been rough and ready busy yeah <clears throat> bristol was was one of the largest ports in the world at this time Se- second largest second largest in 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 britain yeah in bristol yeah. what after yeah. london or probably. after london yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And presumably one of the largest in the world. Yeah, would, yeah. Yeah, 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 Western Europe. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have had shipbuilding. You would have had uh, sort of the docks. Presumably had were organised with outgoing vessels and incoming. Yeah. And Sam, when, Sam, when Samuel Pepys came to Bristol, for instance, he investigated a, a ship that was being built for the Royal Navy on on the site of what is now the Arnold Feeney. So you had all that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. going on. And these poor devils who managed to survive the Monmouth Rebellion, these um, some of the 3,000 soldiers um, Monmouth had, they, um, they, they, if they avoided the hangman's noose, they were sent over to the Caribbean uh, to serve a 10-year apprenticeship, indentured servitude, sorry. In, and, so, um, um, and that happened to Pinney, a chap called Pinney, who was... Who went on to become Lord Mayor, uh, Mayor of Bristol, and one, one thing and another. Oh, of course, and yes. the famous pennies and their slave, slave plantations in Nevis and so on. So young Edward would have been brought up in a, in a sort of uh, a very rough and ready. There'd be sort of presumably rum houses and and all all the sort of paraphernalia which goes around. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ports, ladies and, uh, of the night, and all, yeah, one thing and, and another. All sorts of shenanigans <laughs> going on, and um, presumably as well. So, so it's violent times. Uh, very rough area, very dangerous area, and um, a very poor area, presumably as well. There was, there was great poverty, yeah. and there was also great wealth as well. Yeah, but, but he would he wasn't he wasn't as far as we know from a uh, from a rich family. He was um, he, he was a working class boy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, but also they had glass houses. They had a burgeoning glass industry in Bristol as well. So would that have been quite heavy industry? around there would it be yeah well the, well, the Redcliffe caves were excava- excavated yeah. it for sandstone for the for the glass industry for yeah. instance and so that, that would have been made around Redcliffe and, and other parts of the city yeah. and then straight down onto the ships and yeah. for export so you've got this, this this very very busy port and what do we know of um, uh, of, of Blackbeard's early days when he first went to sea do we know if he went to sea as an indentured servant or whether he oh, went- but that's that's only speculation, yeah. really. What what happened then? He he doesn't really come into the the record books, and until Woods Rogers goes over to to the Bahamas to to take the pirates pardon in in seventeen eighteen seventeen sixteen seventeen eighteen something like that, and he he um, seventeen sixteen it was, and he famously used to sail with a chap called Hornigold. Uh, Hornigold had captured a French guinea man which was a slave ship and had presented it to to Blackbeard as a as a bit of a parting gift and the name of that ship funnily enough was the the Concord oh, was it yeah oh. and and um Blackbeard renamed it the Queen Anne's Revenge and he did that because you had seen at the same time the Hanoverian kings came in and the Stuart line ended so the Queen Anne's Revenge he was sort of legitimising his activities by associating himself with the Jacobean cause. Oh, really? Ah, so when when do, when do we have the knowing the first record of Blackbeard was when he first uh, appears? When he, when, uh, well, that, that is that, that is yeah, first... as far as we know. Yeah, yeah. When and in the Bahamas, when Nassau, the, the capital of the Bahamas, was a was a sort of a, a, um, a, a pirate. Um, what do they call it? They, they call, Pirate Kingdom, sort of thing. That was the 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 capital of the Pirate Kingdom. So where all manner of people were there. So they they actually had kingdoms or or on on the island. Yeah, the they, Pirate they, King. Yeah, you've heard, you've heard of that phrase, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I always thought it was been seafarers as opposed to land. Well, well, it's, yeah. it's people in charge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah but presumably they had their own sort of way of running those those. Uh, yeah. Well, those there, there is legend that that um, Blackbeard used to sit astride a. Uh, um, a barrel of rum 
and if if someone didn't drink to his health when they when they walked by he'd blow their heads off <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um so what what was blackbeard actually like cuz i've heard that he had a bit of a sensitive side <laughs> Who told, who told In what you way that, did he have a sensitive side? Uh, I can't remember, but I just, I've heard it. I've heard that it's true. He liked to sing sad songs. Don't, oh, that's a that's a new one on me. I thought he, he was, was. I thought he was a psychopath. Yeah. No, he, he a, liked to watch cat videos. In his <laughs> he, he, did, a, he did crochet at weekends. He was. I think it's fair to say he was one of the most violent, despicable. Well, that's what he liked to portray. I mean, me and Souls were mentioning this earlier. It, 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 you had to be, you had to, your 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 crew had to be in awe of you, and there was various means at which they did that. And uh, if you blasted the kneecap off of one of your shipmates every now and then, that uh, that sort of did the trick. But he was a huge, tall, imposing man, dark haired, dark beard, hence the, hence his nickname, and um, he he used to like tying bows and putting them in into his into his beard hmm. um and before he go into battle he'd have lighted tapers coming out of his hat sort of smoking away and if he interrogated anybody he used to he used to um eat glass before he did it so his gums bled Arr, like that <laughs> so really he's a he's an amazing uh it's not very sensitive is it so <laughs> well, well it's very creative uh, yeah. it is. watching it's, his cat videos that's like a it's like he's almost like an illusionist in a way, isn't he? He's a psychopath. Well, well, well yeah. yeah. And bad, another th- another thing he did. He was he, a bad uh, person. <laughs> another thing. Was he a bad person? Did, well, did it seriously? Did he have Did he have any redeeming qualities at all? I, I don't know, really, Rich. Yeah. Yeah. We can't. It doesn't seem. Do we know what he did? Do we, Do we know what pirates did with their immense wealth, which they got from the the plundering? They, 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 they buried. They cruise? buried it, didn't they? The, oh, of course they did. Some some did. Kid did. Captain Kid did. Um, which well, is no, actually, we've got, we got two points here. Let's just dwell on this for a, for a, a few minutes. So, do we know if the pirates distributed the wealth evenly amongst the crews? You already mentioned there was some sort of compensation scheme going on. Yeah, and I, I think uh, it was a bit like serving in a, on a naval ship. You know, the, if the captain got a larger share, um, the, the, his other officers got a diminished share. What the surgeon and the carp- ship's carpenter, they both got big shares in in the voyages, oh. and it and it was divvied up amongst them. Yeah, you know, and the head, other the head other, money. The other crucial point. Well, thank you for raising this, Sol. Is they buried their treasure? Why did they do that, Mark? <laughs> or is there any evidence that they did of outside of fiction? Is there any evidence there, of buried there's treasure? There's evidence at all? that Kid, when he, the, the the famous pirate hunter turned pirate, when when. When he went back to sort of the New York area, he he had on one of the islands up around there. He had buried some treasure there. To, in order to go back to it, I mean, you 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 couldn't trust banks in those a bit like <laughs> no, today. No, changed, <laughs> really, <is> it? <laughs> or you know, you, you, so if you're well, Amazon, if Amazon you, and the banks. And you didn't want to advertise your wealth all the time, you know. So if you if you secreted it away, and and definitely in kids kids story. That there there was an occasion of that. A lot of the time they had they had accomplices that would look after them. You always had to trust someone. I mean I mean in um, in Stevenson's book, Silver trusted his wife, and she she looked after his loot. We'll come on we'll come on to Stevenson again in a moment. So, but um, so there's, so there's, there's not there's not really that any 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 documented evidence of it being common for for pirates to. To bury treasure, which is interesting, isn't well, it? Well, it is documented about Kid. About Kid, but it was it's not sixteen nineties. Yeah, yeah, but we don't know of any other instances apart from. Well, the, well, you say that, but that there was um, in the Second World War when the uh, the Americans were island hopping, pursuing the Japanese back to Japan. They came across one island where where they actually discovered some some treasure in a in a in a, a coastal cave. Oh really? What date? Which dated back to um, to the 18th to, century? Well, to, to to earlier times. Yeah, yeah. Wow, oh. that's really cool. So I wanted to ask: Were there pirates from other countries, or were they only from? Oh, definitely. Yeah, the the UK. Some, yeah, some right right individuals from from France and France and and uh, the Netherlands, Spain, Portugal. Everybody had a 
had them. The, there's a famous Mediterranean pirate called Bluebeard. And, <laughs> and I think there was there was one called Yellowbeard. Was this a franchise? And, of, <laughs> it's a, it's a beard franchise in pirates. Yeah. Collect them all. <laughs> yeah, collect all your beards. <laughs> but were, were they only European? I was greybeard once. <laughs> were they only European, or did you have Asian uh, pirates? Yeah, you had you had uh, Chinese pirates and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Every nationality really is yeah. bloody no, everywhere. No one, no one had the monopoly on it. No, everyone was a pirate. You see, everyone was yeah. a pirate. Well, they say they say about the. English English especially, scratch an Englishman, reveal a pirate. The, the great writer James Clavell used to say that. <laughs> but the, the point I was going to make about buried treasure, there is, of course, another instance of buried treasure that is pertinent to, to Bristol. Is that right, Mark? <laughs> with the, with the, the diary of Flewellyn Penrose. Oh, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought you'd the, remember that. Yeah. Yeah, there Would was you like a, to tell us about that, Mark? Yeah, I will do, but can we go back to Blackbeard at the end? Bluebeard? Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. Oh, green, oh, green we've got a couple, yeah, more, yeah, couple yeah. more. We've digressed, but we got a yeah, couple yeah. more tells we, about him. We, but but we, William Williams was a, a, an adventurer from from Bristol uh, who came back and was and was um, given succour, if you like, in the Merchant Venturers almshouses at the end of King Street. And still there, aren't they? And still the, there. Still just, what's le- yeah, the bombers took a little bit of it yeah, away. That's, that's where the Treasure Island Trail starts. Oh, yeah, from yes, directly does, outside yeah. there, listeners. But anyway, he 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 was looked after in in those almshouses, and he was looked after by a chap called Eagles, the Reverend Eagles. And he wasn't expected to live very long, but he lived a, a couple of years in the end. And in gratitude to Eagles, he bequeathed him two of his most valuable possessions. One was a, a book about artists from the 17th and 18th centuries and the other one was this journal of Llewellyn Penrose a seaman and um, it was sort of like a latter day Robinson Crusoe and it had the first ever encrypted pirate code in there um, for, for treasure uh, right, and so and so this was essentially his his was it his autobiographical? This uh, the, the yeah, it, yeah, it was yeah. because he did live live amongst the Mosquito Indians, for yeah. instance, on the Caribbean coast. He lived amongst Native Americans and everything. And so had he, a, had, he, had, he a, had a great love of indigenous peoples. So when he, when he said encrypted code, I so suppose basically we're talking about what we would now recognise being the treasure map. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And it's for, for the buried treasure, yeah, for the buried, yeah, buried yeah. treasure. Yeah. Do we, do we know what the code, how the code was represented? Was it in the form of a map, or was it? It, a it, more... it was a, a, a stylized map with with sort of um, increments all around it with different notation on, and it, it's in it's in the Pirates of Privateers book actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is. It, yeah, it, it, it's, it's it, fasc- is. Fa- it really is fascinating. <clears throat> It is. It's, it's, it's a code, and the idea was picked up upon by the the famous American writer Edgar Allan Poe. That was in the Goldberg, wasn't in it? In the Goldberg, yeah, yeah, exactly right. So he he had that idea, and then Stevenson nicked it from Edgar Allan. Yeah, for Treasure Island. Yeah, for yeah, Treasure yeah. Island. So yeah. the treasure map we can exclusively reveal. It's a Bristol invention. Yeah, and it's not from Kingswood. <laughs> <laughs> it's from King Street. <laughs> You got a thing about Kingswood, haven't you? As yeah, every, no, as no. everybody, <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Kingswood. Yeah. Um, so anyway, okay. So you wanted to come back to Blackbeard? I, I did. I did. Yeah, I we, a couple we, of, of adventures. So, 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 so we're saying he's in touch with his feminine side. But I think we. Well, I think, one I mean, of his one of his feminine traits to, to prove how tough he was amongst his 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 uh, shipmates. He challenged challenged any of them to stay below decks with him while he had uh, treacle and brimstone burning and uh, this was a really smoky incense thing that they used to defume the, the ships with and he he could stay down there amongst that longer than anybody else and it was like an episode from hell really Dante's Inferno and uh, that that that's that's what he's his... very theatrical he's, he's yeah, quite, oh, he it's was, quite it's quite camp was... <laughs> really <laughs> and there's a... bloody essential oils isn't it? <laughs> and there's there's another really nice story about him with um with the Charles Kingsley said and that this was um water Char- babies the water the yeah. author of the water babies yeah. he actually went to the caribbean and um to to find out what it was about this was post emancipation and uh, he got talking to in the British Virgin Islands chain. He got talking to um, to a, a former enslaved woman there, quite elderly at this time. And and it was her who told her told him about the dead chest, dead man's chest, and how 
legend has it in the Caribbean, um, Blackbeard put 75 of his crew that were surplus to requirements on this <laughs> island. Surplus to requirements? Yeah, it was bereft of any any water or, or natural natural resources. And he gave them each a cutlass and a bottle of rum. And then when he went back after after 30 days, he was surprised to find that 15 of them were still alive. So that was the couplet that he used throughout Treasure Island. 15 men on a dead man's chest. You know, all that sort of Go stuff. Go on, do, do, the whole, do the whole one. <clears throat> do the whole, sing us a whole lot, Mark. Sing on, good God. <laughs> no, I was enjoying that. We like, bit, we like a bit of music. It finished, it finished with drink and the devil had done, done with to the, the rest. rest. Yeah. yeah. So quite a tell. What and, happened uh, on that island then? Well, well, what, what, what it was, Dead Man's Chest was the island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the shape of it. I know, I know. But what happened with what, with well, that you, with you, that crew? Did they, were they were they well, can, thought, were they cannibalizing he, each other? Well, that's, that's what Blackbeard yeah. wanted to happen. Is he, he was he was a curious chap, you see, um, and he had he had great curiosity, and so he gave he he, he thought that they would they would drink the rum, kill each other, and you know they they would all perish in some way. But he came back, and fifteen of them were still alive. Yeah, remarkably. Presumably, they killed. The other sixty or whatever, or stolen, yeah, on the island, yeah, yeah, yeah or, or they stolen their rum, or we we don't know, but it was you can imagine it wouldn't have been very nice being marooned on an island with pissed pirates or with cutlasses, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the and the only other option was that you your only chance to get off the island was if the psychopathic bloke who marooned you in the first place came back and got you. It's, oh, it's, it's just suffer, just suffer remember, horror movies, remember. So then then you come up to to his final his final. Um, <laughs> date with destiny when 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 maynard comes up with his two, yeah, so two arms yeah, let's, so let's, let's, let's get back to that let's, let's just paint the um paint the picture because um because blackbeard was uh he was public enemy number one by this by this he time, was yeah he, he, he was so, like a, so but Ma- but he was in cahoots with one of the crooked governors and again you say the, things the, in, the Caribbean, in, the, in, the, in the americas yeah ah, right. and you say things don't change much yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you were yeah, the Republican, presumably. <laughs> well, he'd, he'd, he'd lost an election, but wouldn't admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, anyway we, he was in league with him, but another governor, Spottiswood, he'd had enough of uh, of uh, Blackbeard's... So, so, he, so, so Blackbeard was, by this point, had become a, a real problem, both yeah. in America and in the and in Britain. So he was... Uh, he, he had to be well, um, to the British authorities. To the British authorities, yeah. so he had to be he had to be terminated. He had to be he got did. rid of. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but he was a very very capable um, sailor and captain and fighter. And, yeah. and fighter. And and well, he was famous for having three brace of pistols. Yeah. So it was all, in it's the all, days when you didn't have self loading rifles and stuff, he he carried six pistols about his person. And, and so it was, so it was no easy task. You had a, a heavily armed. Have um, he, he had, um, of, one of his one of his shipmates, one of his best mates was a was a chap called Caesar, who was a a, a freed enslaved person, um, who, who who fought to the death with with Blackbeard, and quite a few of his other mates were 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 well cutthroat sort of thing. So he had, he had a heavily armed, highly skilled um, crew of violent men uh, with a psychopath in charge, who had. Um, great seafaring skills, and their and their and their ships were could gen, could still generally outrun. Could the, could the outrun the, the so navy. It, yeah. So it's so it's no easy thing to to one to find them because presumably they they yeah. they were very familiar with all the and and, and, were, and had the support of the local population as well because presumably they they, the, some of the yeah. you know they they were, they were they were better for the uh, local economy than either the British or American governments and. Um, so they they had that that support. So so setting that scene, it, how they they sent this Captain Maynard. Do we know his first name? Yeah, um, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> so Maynard set sail from what from the Americas? Uh, or from? Yeah, yeah. He, he, in in two heavily armed sloops. Oh, so these were smaller, more manoeuvrable. <clears throat> smaller, mo- yeah, more yeah, manoeuvrable okay. ships. So he got that right. And they what said, he did, yeah. he pretended he was a prize. So he got right. all his mates to go below decks. In order for for Blackbeard to be interested in them, right? So, and so Blackbeard was on one one ship at this time. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. it was just the Queen Anne's Revenge. He'd, he'd already lost the Queen Anne's Revenge. Funnily enough, they dug it up a few years ago, or they found they found it, and this, and they they were they found a hypodermic syringe in in the in the wreck wreckage of the vessel that they'd used for venereal disease. 
Really? Yeah. yeah they, used to, they used to pop the old mercury down the end of your... Oh. <laughs> You're lucky to survive that. Oh. I, I, <laughs> Cap, Captain Quicksilver, Dover, I, who we can't, we can't oh. mention. I he, 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 had a cure, he had a He had a cure... <laughs> He had a cure. They used to say one night with Venus and seven with Mercury. So what was the name of Blackbeard, Blackbeard's ship? The Queen and Andrew Queen Avenger. Queen Andrew Avenger. I don't, I don't know the we name. Don't, we don't know the don't name know of the ship. It, so anyway, Blackbeard is, is tricked into, 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 attacking, um, into attacking, board, attacking and boarding what Maynard's he thought ship. was an unarmed yeah. prize. So, yeah. An unarmed prize. So there, there were two... There were two um, Ships. Did the other one two then? Of them, two oh. of them, they were alongside one another. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah and as soon, as soon as Blackbeard's men boarded, up they all popped and they had a hell of a scrap. Yeah. And during the scrap, it's alleged that, that uh, Blackbeard took five musket balls to his body, 20 cuts to it as well, and he was just about to dispatch Lieutenant Maynard um, when this Scottish sailor uh, took his head off with a claymore. And, and that's the incident Rich was referring to. What's a claymore? Claymore is a type of a type of cutlass. It's a type of um, Scottish sword. Really a big, heavy duty one. Yeah, it would yeah. be, wouldn't it? If you could take <sighs> your head he took off. his head off in so one swipe. Yeah. Oh, you can, so he's Can you imagine so, this? So whilst whilst um, Blackbeard's head's rolling on the deck, they pick his body up, throw it over the side of the ship, and this is the legend where it, it headless it, it sell he, he swam three times around the ship before going under. What happened to what happened to the the head? The head they 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 needed it because they had a bounty on it, so they put it on the bowsprit, took it back to Charleston, and um, and um, Charleston's in Virginia, is uh, it? Carolina, Carolina, yeah, and um, and took the took the bounty, yeah, got the bounty for it, and apparently they pickled the head and then used it as a drinking vessel, in one of the pubs. What do you reckon about that, Saul? You seem very quiet, Sol. I know, um, you, look, you look a bit pale. Oh, I feel a bit bad for Blackbeard. <laughs> <laughs> where, he deserved where, better than where, that. Where's, where's, <laughs> what would they, they, so presumably they'd have drunk rum out of this. That's what, yeah, 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 they did, yeah. Oh. Where is it now? I think it got stolen, apparently. At, at the Beaufort Arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should, uh, listen, yeah, we should, say, we should remind uh, our listeners that Mark is the landlord of the Beaufort Arms in Hawkesbury up to a very, very fine hostelry. Um, but, um, yeah, next time you have a drink of rum, yeah, it, comes in something, you know, it comes in a funny-looking, shriveled-up... <laughs> Like it usually does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and, uh, you, you, could, you could be drinking out of the beard skull. That's what, is that where the expression getting skull comes from? <laughs> it was so it could be. It could be, yeah. Yeah, getting skulled on Captain Morgan's yeah, yeah, yeah. run. So, well, well, thank you for that, Mark. And well, thank you very much. Pleasure. I mean, I, I, there's, there's other tales. I mean, yeah. Woods Rogers, you know. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Mark. We'd like to ask you back at some time to. to um, Talk about the the, the, the good pirate. guys. We no, had the no, baddies. The, good guys. <laughs> the pirate that you've admitted. There's one pirate which you've completely. Sorry, I'm sorry to break this to you, listeners. That Mark has just forgotten about entirely. And who might that be? Oh, long sorry. John Silver. Oh, long off girls are fictional. Yeah, but he's not. He's not real. He's, he's not real, real Richard. Me, Actually, <laughs> this, this this is a good point for me to point out that the fake ghost. Oh yes, the fake ghost. I haven't, yeah. I haven't, I haven't told anyone yet. Oh, well, it was, time. it was. Dis- no, nobody, nobody will be listening by now. So. <laughs> nobody will be listening by now. If anyone, yeah, well, this, this, yeah. Um, it was the Long John Silver pulling pints in the in the hole in the wall. Yeah, as well. Was that yeah, it? Yeah, the, 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 it was, it was the ridiculous. Wall, yeah. yeah, but that that was the, <laughs> the fake story. story yeah. yeah. Well, even yeah. though that was his pub in Bristol. No, no. It was, we, I said that the ghost of Long John Silver could still be heard pulling pints and doing the washing up, doing the dish, putting the dishwasher. <laughs> but, but there is no evidence. It's never been said by anyone other than me that the ghost of Long John Silver haunts the hole in the wall. Everything else was true, though. People, some people true. thought the Gardner Haskins one. Was most the, most people seem to think Gardner Haskins. No, no. But I was, I was told that, so I don't know if it's true or not. But I was told. Why did Any, Gardner Haskins? Oh, uh, we won't. We won't <laughs> listen, listen. So anyway, <laughs> to wrap up, I want I want to go back. I to I bought some screws there once. Mark, we end. Let's end on Please. some pirate jokes. <laughs> Why are pirates called pirates? Cause they are.